Welcome to episode 87 of the Luke Winstall Show. Today's guest is a former NFL tight end, better known now as a TikTok star who just passed the 250,000 follower mark. On the show today, we talk about his advice for creators and also his TikTok consulting agency, Global Perspective Media. Hakeem Vallis, thank you for joining me on the show. How are you doing today? I'm good, Luke. Appreciate you having me, man. Yeah, glad to have you on. First off, I'd like to begin, what's your story been like for you going up as an athlete, making it to the pros, and now in your maybe post-NFL career? I mean, what's that journey been like for you? Uh, it's definitely a story based around uh, self-awareness and doing what I love. Always kind of been an entrepreneur, always kind of been an athlete. I was that kid in middle school who was selling Skittles, but I was also the same kid in middle school who woke up at 4 a.m. every day to go to the gym to get my jump shots in because I used to want to go to the NBA. Um, as I grew up, you know, when I was finishing up high school, going into college, started an iPhone repair business, used to fix three to four phones a day. Um, once I was in college, also used to fix and flip houses uh, up in North Jersey. But at the same time, I was playing D1 football and I rode the bench. I was a bench player for three years got my first catch in college, my senior year of college, um, finished my college career with three touchdowns and under a thousand yards, I believe under 50 catches and uh, made it undrafted to the Arizona Cardinals. And uh, from there played three year NFL career and uh, retired and entered a whole nother world of entrepreneurship. Wow. Okay. I'm curious with the mm -hmm. entrepreneurial itch. It seems like it's always been there for you. What do you think drives you towards that? Uh, I think it's just DNA. Um, I don't. I, I don't even know. You know, my it's funny. Valentine's Day is around the corner. <clears throat> my uh, my parents used to sell uh, flowers, roses, things like that, up in New York, um, way back in the day. Um, so I'm thinking a solid of it, solid amount of it, just comes with DNA. And then the second part, I think, is just the uh, the freedom aspect. Yeah, who do you think influenced you in that way? Because you're also known as one of the athletes who is very financially wise, despite not having these $100 million contracts or anything like that. Influenced me? Um, I don't know. You know, my dad's always been in the back of my ear. Um, from a real estate standpoint, uh, bigger pockets. And a guy named Brandon Turner, who hosts... The Bigger Pockets podcast. Um, kind of been a huge fan since probably like 2015 um, ish, and uh, that's probably been you know from a that's been a a distant mentor. Same thing as uh, Gary V. Just listen to his content um, consistently and actually going deep in it, and not just uh, you know listen to his Instagram clips. Um, he's also been a distant mentor as well. Walk me through what it's like going from three touchdowns, not a huge stat line, your senior year of college, first year playing, to then making it onto an NFL team. It's uh, it's wild, definitely. Um, it it allows you to remember to always stay grounded um, and to continue to have that chip on your shoulder. Um, you know, the same guy playing in front of 70,000 people, the same guy who used to play in front of 6,000 people um, over at Monmouth University. Um, it's It can be overwhelming at times. Um, it can be really fast. Um, the hardest part is slowing down. The greats when it comes to football are the ones who have the ability to actually see the game in slow motion um, versus someone who's not so great everything feels like it's going a thousand miles an hour and you have to kind of keep up with the game and the process um, along the journey. Definitely. Well, you've turned that journey to now your life after football. It seems like you've always had a lot of things going, whether it be business, sports, everything around it. So with where you are in the current moment, what all is going on in your life? What kinds of things are you running? Um, in the moment, running Perspective Global Media uh, we're a TikTok consulting agency. Uh, we work with different brands, individuals, entrepreneurs, personalities, athletes on helping them get launched on the platform and then guide them along the way, whether it's working with influencers with them, um, 
whether it's being their talent and post producing their content um, or whether it's just high level strategy. Okay. I want to dive into that. Your TikTok career. You're basically a TikTok star now. You're over 230,000 followers. A lot of people in the sports niche and the sports industry are looking at your content on a daily, weekly basis. How did you first get started on TikTok? Yeah, my, my journey on TikTok went from, you know, I spent my first six months or so posting a whole bunch, but didn't do well. I was just taking my best content from Instagram and posting it there. Um, and it wasn't until I heard a piece of Gary Vee content of taking some time and only consuming within my niche and understand what's working, what's not working and adding your own sauce to it. And, you know, started to consume a bunch of other entrepreneurs, a bunch of other real estate professionals and a bunch of other sports content creators um, really fell in love with the whole green screen um, aspect of creating content and, you know, dove deep there, but then put my head down for 30 days and just posted every day. And when I posted every day, my first week, I went from 55 followers to 22,000. That's back when we first found each other. And then in the first month, went to 82,000. And in the first six weeks, I was at 100,000 followers. And with that, it was just kind of compounding wins and stacking them on top of each other. And one thing I found is TikTok rewards consistency. So it's really just about trying to stay consistent as much as possible. Definitely. There's a lot to unpack there. So my next question for you, when you first, to go back even further, when you first started, I mean, you're hearing probably about this dancing app, like what was your initial impression of TikTok? And then what made you want to hop on and join that? Yeah. I slept on it at first. Same. Um, you know, I was, yeah, it was a dancing app. I have the luxury of, um, the mother of my child has a little sister and she's now 12. So she, she's been on Musical.ly for the last four years or so. So she's always yeah. talked about Musical.ly. I did a dance with her maybe two years ago, like on a Musical.ly, like it was fun, it was cute, whatever. And <clears throat> I just, you know, listening to Gary Vee's content, you know, he kind of mentioned, you know, at least start to play with it, start to learn more about it, start to uh, do some things with it. And wasn't having much success, like I said, was taking my best IG videos and putting it there. Um, and then it was just, it was, it was hearing his one piece of content of do this and it'll work. And then doing a bet with one of my admins on posting every day for 30 days, which motivated me. And after those 30 days, I was at 82,000 followers. It was kind of like, okay, we might have something here. Let's keep diving deeper, keep diving deeper, keep diving deeper. And as that kept growing, where my business was at the time, Perspective Global Media, we were doing podcast production uh, for a bunch of clients. And I wasn't necessarily happy with doing that. It was I feel like I had to micromanage a bunch of stages of the podcast production process. And my admins really uh, recommended that I maybe consider getting into the TikTok consulting space to put me at the forefront and just charge for essentially access to my time. And that's how we, you know, essentially flipped the business model and have kind of uh, ran with it since. It's probably been since about a little bit before October when we made that pivot. Okay. Well, it seems like everyone's got a different spot on TikTok. When you open your For You page, some people get the dancing videos, some people get sports, some people get everything in between. Now there's all these different angles to it. How would you describe the niche and the target that you're trying to hit with your videos? For me, um, my niche, my target is just me. People resonate with me, the person. Um, definitely not trying to lock myself in as just the sports content creator. Um, I've definitely found a niche and a calling there and a community there. Um, but I don't try and just limit myself to that. I try and put out day in the life content. I try and put out content about coffee because I like coffee. Um, I try and put out content. I've done it. I've, I got to put up more on magic and magic tricks because I used to want to be David Blaine. Uh, I put out only like I think two pieces of content about magic. Um, I have to put out more day in the life content. Um, more. Um, you're going to start to see a lot more of uh, TikTok advice and mm. podcast content from. I have a new podcast. I haven't dropped yet called Don't Sleep on TikTok, um, where I've been interviewing a bunch of 
other top creators who are having business success on the platform um, to go deeper into showing people that this is what works, that's what works, this is what works, that works, this works, that works. Kind of every angle from financial advisors to someone who sells boats to commercial real estate brokers to real estate investors to we're going to have dog face on um, the ocean spray guy. He'll, he'll, he should be on. He was supposed to be on about two weeks ago, but we had to reschedule. Um, but with that, you, you're going to start to see me putting out a lot more TikTok advice type of content as well okay for me i first got on board with tiktok about 2019 i wanted to write a fun essay for one of my english classes and i wrote about how some of these pop stars and music were getting really big off of spotify streams coming from tiktok videos things like that so for you in your industry where you are now you've got a business off tiktok how are the numbers because you've got followers and likes how are things translating to your business side now um, well, I'm not directly monetizing per se for my audience yet. Okay. Um, I put out a piece of content maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago, giving value on one of my best tips for TikTok, just about consuming for five to 10 hours within your niche. And then I had a call to action on the back end of if you're a business owner, brand or whoever looking for um, some more practical advice on TikTok, um, my media company, we're doing free 10 minute consultations over zoom and that got a super i mean i'd probably say probably 40 50 people uh signed up for a zoom call which was kind of cool to uh go deeper with that group and segment my audience okay we got a solid amount of people who are looking to grow on tiktok within my tiktok audience i've put out a call to action a month or so ago Oh, on seeing who's interested in potentially training virtually with me and 2000 people responded to that. Um, so that's kind of the two things that actually stand out. Besides that, I've really been using it to just test my own insights. So I have a proof of concept as I approach brands, um, whoever that I'm trying to work with that it doesn't, you know, I'm not blowing smoke out of my, my backside um because i'm actually doing it myself okay it seems like well it's obvious you're getting great responses good engagement on your videos so how does tiktok or where does tiktok rank for you among social media and different outlets for you to try to promote and get messages out and get responses um i treat tiktok and tiktok and link i mean if you're going off of this past month it's 95 percent tiktok five percent everything else i don't consume much at all really on tiktok the only platform i actually consume on is twitter um tiktok i just post and i live in the comments and then every time i go back to the platform it's not let me scroll on the for you page it's let me just respond to a couple of comments and see if there's any questions so i can maybe make another video off of the questions um but it's TikTok and LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I kind of took a, I slowed down on LinkedIn just this past month because just been busy with business. Um, but TikTok and LinkedIn are probably 80 to 90% of social. And then the other 10% is everything else. Okay. Well, I'm curious with what you mentioned about Twitter, consuming a lot there. Why do you think you do that? What draws you to Twitter? Uh, Twitter is, it allows you to decide who you want to consume content from so i get all my i don't really watch much of the news i watch i get my news from twitter so i have some of my favorite yeah. reporters on both sides that i follow have notifications on and then i uh always just checking like i get my breaking news from twitter like twitter's the best spot to understand yeah. what's happening right now like the crash in fort worth yesterday that was wild. I don't know if you saw that, but like, as, like right as it was happening, I'm like getting, I'm seeing it, it was the number one thing trending and I'm showing, seeing the videos and all that type of stuff. Um, pretty much everything, like everything, especially with the, the world we're living in right now. Uh, it's great to get news straight from the people uh, in a sense and consume both sides and you give your real, you give your real thought onto what's, opinion and what's not on the back end. Okay. Yeah. Back to TikTok. I'm curious for you as an individual, what did it feel like when you first started seeing success and your accounts blowing up? Uh, it was cool. You know, stay grounded. I'm always just naturally 
have stayed grounded never really took it for much i thought it was well, it's a super humbling feeling you know when you've got hundreds of thousands of people who actually like the content that you're putting out um you've got a community around you that supports you and you see the same 50 to 100 people on damn near every post that are, that are commenting it's super humbling when someone makes a video that's like a green screen that's of someone that i interacted with and they're so excited that i interacted with them that they're so swooned by that moment and they're like oh my gosh hakeem balish just followed me oh my gosh hakeem just commented back on my post and they're making a TikTok about it that's an incredible feeling because it woke me up into what's possible and makes me actually double down on it because when i was a kid i was a diehard eagles fan and i saw the impact there's a guy named mike bartram who was the backup long snapper who visited our school and he visited my brother's classroom and not even mine like i didn't get to meet him but it was the coolest moment at that time because he was he walked the halls of my school so it meant that i breathed the same air as the backup eagles long snapper but now 20 years later i'm telling you that story because that had so so much of an impact and now knowing that I can do that times a hundred because I'm actually directly interacting with you on the social platform that matters to you and giving you a, a cosign to whatever you're doing, uh, whatever that that's going to have that some type of level of lasting impact that Mike Bartram had on me. So that's kind of that, that's probably the coolest part of damn, I'm growing damn I'm getting all these likes and getting all these stuff but like damn i can actually impact a lot of these people because this is no other pro app no some do but no not many place an importance on the community side of uh, building an audience for sure now i want to transition and go into picking your brain a little bit about TikTok. some advice for people tuning in they've seen you do really well what tips would you give to content creators that are trying to get into a sports niche similar to the way that you have Content creators who want to get into the sports niche on TikTok um, have to do a couple of things. You know, if you're a subject matter expert on a sport, on a topic, TikTok gives you the opportunity to demonstrate that. It's now can you communicate in a post-production contextual sense for TikTok, meaning not showing up looking like a narc at a college party. Um, so best piece of advice is download an app called InShot um, on InShot they have a, a, a mode called canvas and you click on canvas once you click on canvas you put it on 9 by 16 and you can take any type of sports clip and drag it to the top of a 9 by 16 aspect ratio so now the video is above you like all my videos and you can essentially add further context deeper detail of what's going on in that video mm. unlike most people do full screen green screen it doesn't look good it gets kind of blurry they have to move out of the way to show the play that's behind them versus having it above you it's just super clean and now it allows you to be sports center and be the breaking news for everything so my best piece of advice is use InShot, use the screen recorder on your phone though i the main reason why i can put out content so fast is that it takes me eight to twelve minutes from idea to execution. So if I'm watching the Super Bowl and AB makes a move on Tyron Matthew and scores a touchdown, I'm watching that live. I know for a fact that the NFL account on Twitter just posted a video of that. So I go to that video, screen record it, crop it, take it to InShot, drop it in there, throw it up to the top, boom, save it, turn off the sound because you have to go back and turn it off if you forget to do that once you get to the green screen thing. Now I'm on Twitter and I'm green screening it. And uh, I had my two cents. This is called a shake or whip route because I know that this is goods on goods. Tyron Matthew versus AB. Like this is this is what you want to see. This is why we were watching the Super Bowl. Um, and this is the touchdown. Like it allows you to be in the breaking news space and it doesn't take that long. So I'd say one, focus on green screen. Two, focus on the first three seconds, meaning get your thesis across in the first three seconds and then get into the video because the first three seconds are the most important because people are consuming on the for you page 80 percent of the people consuming your content are consuming from the for you page so first off people don't know who you are to begin with like every time i make most videos i just tell people to just look at my videos and see how i act in the first three seconds 
I'm trying to get as much information in who's playing, what the game is, what the situation is, what the thesis is, and then get into the story. Um, and then also from a visual cue, subconscious wise, make as many things pop in the first three seconds as well. So same thing, go to my videos, look at the first three seconds and pay attention to how many words are popping up, how many stickers. Like if it's a football game, I'm going to have 150%, whatever teams are playing, you're going to see a, a sticker pop up from each team, like the logo, like a GIF um, from each team. And then also not have anything sit still. So most people, when they click on something, whether it's the word or the GIF, and you hit set duration, they usually start at 0.0, .0 seconds. I say slide it in a few frames to like 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, because now when that when I'm scrolling on the For You page and now I get to Luke's post, instead of those words being stagnant, it's pop, 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 whatever mm -hmm. you're trying to say. Because subconsciously, that's a visual cue that's going to bring that consumer of that content more into that video, if that makes sense. Definitely. Another thing that a lot of people have been asking me about and telling me to ask you when I talk about questions for somebody who's big on TikTok, a lot of people are curious about the algorithm, how it works. I know TikTok and the For You page is famous for that. Do you have any tips on how to appear on more For You pages? I know you mentioned a little bit, but to dive yeah. a little deeper. Yeah, I'd say TikTok's algorithm is the most democratic. It's, TikTok's the most democratic platform out there. If you put out good content, it'll do well. And quality is subjective. The only thing you can control is quantity. So one, put out as much content as possible because you'll learn more about your audience and what they like. Two, never, ever, ever hashtag FYP, hashtag for you, hashtag for you page. Um, I hop on conversations with uh, the public figures team at TikTok and they say TikTok's completely, they, they, they don't register those hashtags. Like they don't, they don't, they don't work. Like people think it's a hack to get on. It doesn't matter. All you're doing is wasting space in the bottom left-hand corner of your post because the more, the longer your caption is, the more space it's going to take up on your screen. So now if you have words popping up there, it's going to be covered by your caption because you tried to hack the algorithm. So that doesn't work. Another thing that doesn't work is trying to use broad hashtags that are already crushing. Like let's say you're a DIY carpenter and you and when you when you're doing your hashtags you put hashtag diy because hashtag diy has a billion views versus diy carpenter might only have six thousand the main reason why you want to do hashtag diy carpenter is because when TikTok is determining how my this one man's opinion is what i've heard from a lot of different creators when TikTok is determining how your video goes viral, who's for you page it's showing up on, it's testing for a few metrics. And what those metrics are, it's essentially like a six point system. And I don't know what the score is that gets you to the next set of for you pages, but essentially once you post a video, TikTok scans that video from, from an audible standpoint, what are you saying? From a visual standpoint, what words are popping up, what GIFs are popping up? And then from a caption standpoint, what was your caption and, and what were your hashtags that you used? Taking all of that into account, TikTok's now going to find the best sample audience of, let's say, 500 people to now put on their For You pages. Once it's on those 500 people's For You pages, it's testing for six different metrics. You're going to get six points if someone watches your video and then texts it to someone off the platform. Because TikTok sees that as the greatest thing because you're sending it to someone who doesn't have it, but now might be compelled to not download it. You're gonna get five points if someone watches that video and then re-watches it again. You're gonna get four points if someone watches that video, clicks on your profile, and now throws you a follow. You're gonna get three points if someone just watches it from top to bottom, two points for a comment, one point for a like. So there's no real hacking the algorithm from likes and, and comment standpoint, but the main reason why you wanna have such detailed hashtags and not use broad hashtags because if you use hashtag diy in that same scenario i just mentioned with the carpenter now you're going to confuse tiktok for that sample audience of 500 people that it's going to put that video in front of and now because you hashtag diy there might be diy makeup people in there diy desserts people in there and now you're talking about carpentry and how to you know put down this wood floor but now someone who loves makeup 
that shows up on their for you page like you've seen videos that pop up on your for you page that have nothing to do with the type of stuff you like and right what do you, do? you just go right by it but when you do that now because you, you're trying to hack your post with hashtags now you're showing up on the wrong people's for you page and now your video isn't passing that six point test so now TikTok's not going to now expand it from that sample audience of 500 to the next sample audience of a thousand to the next sample because you're not passing the test so you're essentially screwing yourself the only hack there is like there really is no hacks for TikTok. the only hack there is is TikTok's discover page is human curated it's not something like like twitter's algorithm like twitter's uh trending is just whatever people are tweeting about someone from TikTok actually decides at the end of every day what's going to be the next things on the discover page like the discover page is infinite like you can continuously scroll and but it's it's like if you scroll enough you'll see the hashtags from new year's you'll see the hashtags from christmas you'll see them from halloween you'll see that like you'll see them from all the entire year but every day it's wise to just check out the hashtags on the discover page take five minutes look at the videos on there and see if any of them fall under your niche or under like if any of them inspire you to create content within the confines of what's working under that hashtag because that's the only hack that's going to actually help your growth is if you can create content for what's currently trending on the discover page wow okay so i've been on there for a year using all these awful hashtags so very helpful. now you know so now, now it's, i know just look at my videos and look at the like i probably got that piece of advice mid-december so everything mid-december and on you'll see how detailed my hashtags are like some of they're not broad like if it's a bears chiefs game you're gonna see hashtag bears hashtag chiefs hashtag nfl and maybe hashtag touchdown if there was a touchdown that happened like that's about it because they wow. take into account what are people consuming what comments are people liking and that's how they determine what content hops is now pops up on your for you page that's really interesting okay well, now I want to move into the next segment of the show. I've got this deck of cards here called Pod Decks. There's 40 cards. There's a different question on each card. So I'll shuffle. Cool. Some of these questions are a little deeper. Some are pretty light. Cool. So here we are, fully spontaneous. First question for you. What is your favorite thing that you've bought this year? In 2021? Wow, that's a good question. I don't buy much stuff. Favorite thing I bought this year is probably I really don't buy much. I'm trying to even look on my person. Uh, I got a my ring light was acting up. I got a new ring light. Nice. <laughs> Typical creator answer. Yeah. Awesome. Number two. What's the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? Um, the fortune is in the follow up. We, we're presented hundreds, if not thousands of opportunities on a, th on a daily basis, but most people don't follow up. All the fortune in what you want to accomplish is in following up with people in your network, people from podcasts, we listen to podcasts all the time. What's the best way for people to reach out? Oh, just shoot me an email at so-and-so and so-and-so. I usually get back, it takes me two weeks, three weeks, but I'll get back to you. And like, people just don't follow up. Gotcha. Okay. Number three, what's your guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasure, um, probably sweets. What's your favorite gadget? Favorite gadget is probably, it's gotta be the iPhone. I mean, it's every, it's every, like my life, I could, I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm cool with separating and being away from it, but more and more I've been trying to do as much as possible from my phone. I do like being on my laptop, like when it's emails and getting back to people and stuff. I'm trying to get better with doing everything mobile, um, if that makes sense. But I'd probably say my, my, my cell phone. Okay. Why is that a goal for you, to go on the phone? Um, I don't like being at the mercy of anything, meaning the mercy of my laptop, meaning I can't answer emails unless I have my laptop, which means I have to have Wi-Fi, which means I have to be somewhere where I can... How, you know what I'm saying? Versus right. I can be in bed when my daughters sleep on me, but I can still answer emails as efficiently and effectively as if I was sitting at my desk. Okay. Number five, 
When you die, what do you want to be remembered for? Uh, you got a deep one. Yeah, that was the one you mentioned. Huh? <laughs> I'd probably say. One, he was a great dad. Two, he left him an amazing legacy. And then three, he gave more than he took. Mm. Awesome. Number six, what book belongs on everyone's bookshelf? Mm, it's, it's a perfect follow-up to that, um, The Go-Giver. Um, there's a really good book by Bob Berg called The Go-Giver. Um, takes maybe two hours to read, like 120 pages, but it's a short fiction story on understanding the value of giving. Okay, and then lucky number seven, we'll go with the final one of what are you most excited about right now? Um, I'm most excited about my agency, Perspective Global Media. Um, you know, we, we're starting to hit some momentum. Um, not many people know about me which excites me more than anything um, because I try not to be as loud. I try not to be that loud, uh, but I know what value I bring. Um, but I'm excited about the momentum on the back end. I think brands are starting to wake up to TikTok and I'm trying to be that person who's there to work with these brands. Um, just trying to stay more and more in the dirt and uh, grind it out and actually produce real results. For sure. Well, I want to hear about your global perspective media here. What kind of services do you offer specifically? How do you help people? Yeah. Um, one, it's reverse engineering what they want to accomplish. You know, if you're a CPG brand or consumer, consumer packaged goods, meaning some type of product, um, you know, maybe you need to start running an influencer campaign because influencers, micro, macro, nano are super underpriced on TikTok because most people have never been identified as an influencer yet on TikTok. Like, for example, how many followers do you have on TikTok? Uh, about 1,400. 1,400. But you have a solid audience that believes in what you do and your engagement's high. So I would say that someone like you, if I had, if I own this hat company, but this hat only cost me $2 to make, it'd be wise for me to send you a hat and ask for you yep. to just wear it whenever you feel like it and tag my company if you're feeling it in some of your posts, because that's going to bring my brand a lot of value because you have such a great audience, although you only have 1,400 followers, which makes you underpriced, meaning on Instagram, if you have the same level of engagement that you have on TikTok on Instagram, like those 1,400 followers are more like 14,000 followers on Instagram, which right. means I might have to pay you in a sense. So we help on the influencer side, um, navigating those influencer and managing those relationships. Um, we help from the high level consulting side. So just building out a game plan and a roadmap, you just got started on the platform and you need to figure out how to navigate, where to start, where to, I, coming up with pillars of content to live in. Meaning, okay, you want a podcast, you should, for example, this is probably the best piece of advice, and I'd recommend you do this moving forward, is have your guests, like, whether it's one question, whether it's on air, whether it's after the podcast is over, have them answer a question with their phone on selfie mode to record that answer, um, because you'll be able to post-produce a better piece of TikTok content with that selfie mode piece of content, if that makes sense. Okay. Does that makes so sense. Them, like, pull up a phone like that and answer it. That's what I'm doing right now. Okay. Off to the side of the camera, facing yeah. you, talking to you. Like last night, I was on a podcast. I don't know how many subscribers they had, but I had one clip because he incited me to tell a story about when I was playing the Vikings and I puked in the locker room. Um, but it's at 200 or something thousand views, and it's only been 12 hours since I posted that. Um, but it's like now that's bringing a lot of attention back to that guy's podcast. That makes sense. But Got also it. he was building a strategy around that. He would ask every guest to record at least one question. So he'd have it so he could produce it and put it on his page. So strategy like that and or becoming the talent and actually post-producing content for a brand. So them being the person, 
me actually or my team actually making the edits on the content fascinating well hakeem that's all the questions i had for you i appreciate your time no doubt brother enjoy the conversation thank you for tuning in to this edition of the luke winstall show please be sure to follow on social media at luke winstall show and share it with all your friends that concludes this episode but i'll see you back next week with another great guest